No. Hello, this is episode 13 of the GNT show live on Zoom for a change. So it's good to kind of obviously have the computer um, and travel and stuff like that. It's good obviously to have everyone, like to have people like together online and connect through people. Obviously, myself, Glenn, Tony's on the other line. He's, we're usually we doing it? Together, but we're, uh, we're a different place we're today. Online. And we have our guest today, none other than Ray Goggins. How are you doing? All right, boys. What's crack? Are you well? How's things? Uh, just, just first of all, we just. On behalf of myself and Tony, we'd like to thank you very much for coming on. We know, obviously, you have a busy schedule. Um, and just thanks very much for, for taking the time out of your day to, to come out and chat with us. Really appreciate it. Yeah, because right you know, yeah, you've been up to your eyes with the new book launch and everything like that. So yeah, it really means a lot for you to give up your time and come out. Last long, yeah. It's always good to talk, yeah. It's good to talk. So kind of like, we want to kind of just obviously go into like, your background force and kind of your early life force. So we want to start off by how you got into special forces. Now we looked on you, you have 26 years experience training in the special forces, I believe. Yeah. I want to know after like, obviously you finished school, how you got in to, uh, why, what made you pick the special forces to get into and how you made that decision and how you progress from there. Yeah, so I, I I was probably in the army a couple of a couple of years before I went to special forces. So I went initially. Uh, I didn't pass the course is pretty hard to get in. What's called selection. So I didn't pass the first time round because I didn't. You know, I wasn't prepared. Uh, I hadn't trained properly, but um, I did pass it eventually. After I suppose it was nine years in the army before I got. I went to special forces. So the reason I went is because like like any other job. You know, I wanted to kind of be in the best part that I could and be, I suppose, the best kind of um, the best type of soldier, I guess, I could be. Um, I, won't, I won't say the best version of myself, like people say, because there's no such thing. Like, you're, you're how, yourself. Yeah. There's, there's how, no versions. It's just you, yeah. So, yeah, so many, I, wanted, I wanted to be in the best unit I could be in. And that, that was that was like special forces. So that's, that's kind of why. Brilliant. How many years do you have to do in the Army before you can apply for it? You don't, there's no kind of rules um, that like, the, the only rules are kind of that, you know, you have to be qualified as in you have to finish all your training in the in the Army, Navy or the Air Corps. So like once you finish your training, it's probably six to nine months the training would take in, in the regular Army, recruit training or whatever, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Once you've that finished and you're in the Army, you can apply, technically you can apply for Special Forces then, yeah. Did you always want to go into it from school? Um, from school, yeah, I wasn't really interested in anything else. Only the army, you know. I didn't yeah. really know much about special forces, I guess, until I went into the army. Um, so I had a couple of years in the infantry, you know, which is just like the nor- regular army uh, in Cork, and um, so like, yeah, like you see these lads then that the special forces lads around the car and stuff like that, and you be kind of going like, Jesus, these lads look a bit different. What's the crack here, like with these boys? Mm, you, yeah, you know, I did a bit yeah. of kind of found out about the unit then and what they do and so on and so forth. And I said, Yeah, look, I would mind having a crack off this now and see if I can get in with these fellas. So that was good. Cool. a lot more. Everybody sees you from the show on Hell Week, obviously. I hope you don't uh, judge me now with my flowery wallpaper behind me. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you don't be judging me by that. You're all right, right. <laughs> you're all right Tony. No, no worries. It's grand. It's grand. It's a statement there. You're all right. No worries. <laughs> so we just want to kind of obviously touch on your special force training. So you spent 26 years there, I believe. So could you just share just an ex- like just your overall experience? Like what? Like what exactly did you do in the special forces? Like your your roles and the whole lot. Because 26 years is a long span. For someone for an area to work and i'm sure you've done a lot of roles could you just yeah, I, elaborate and speak on what you did yeah there? sure yeah so look i well 26 years was my full career so if you take nine out of that the first nine i was in the i was in the regular army and yeah. the remained in 17 that i spent in special forces so yeah. uh, so my role your role varies so obviously after your training um and your what was called skills training in my time, which is half a year, basically. Um, you're qualified and you go into a team as like the teams are broken down into various sizes. So you're in as the junior man. Mm. So that, that's kind of when you learn a lot of stuff from the more senior guys in your team. Um, so role-wise then for me, like all the, the normal special forces roles we train for, like, you know, 
what we call black roll, which is all kind of hostage rescue stuff or anti-terrorist intervention stuff that you'd see. Um, so you, you train for that as bread and butter. And then what we would call conventional roll or green roll stuff mm-hmm. include like, you know, patrol and ambush and all that kind of stuff. Like all the stuff you see, like, you know, where you're in, in like um, various operations overseas and that. So like um, I was in, at the start, I was interested in the kind of maritime side of it, which meant um, kind of, you know, becoming a diver. So that's like another selection course again that you do you become a combat diver, which is, it's hardship again, like everything's hardship. Yeah. In that place. You get into that then. <laughs> and that's kind of, that was my role then. So I was in like a task unit. So everything I, I did was geared towards like, say diving first is like the entry kind of, ticket training you're all divers then you go into like you know you specialize in different things um you know you train how to you know like um do ship takedowns underway Mm. or static takedowns like beach reconnaissance um and any maritime reconnaissance and insertion operations so anything like that we were responsible for so like yeah basically like going to sea being attached Mm. to naval elements and being able to dive covertly onto ships blah 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 um whatever your insertion method is. is. But uh, that's kind of what I did as, as a, my bread and butter in maritime for most of my career in special forces. Well, There's many that's, times. That's, that's a long answer to your question. <laughs> no, no, it's was good. No, better. The, the been... more detailed, the better. Right? Yeah, sound, yeah. Sound. Yeah, exactly. The more we get from you, the better. Was there any times where you thought to yourself, all right, I don't think this is for me or I can get through this or uh, any? No, there wasn't, to be honest, Tony. I am... Um, it was all, it was hard. Like all the training is hard for a reason because like you're trying to train for something that's like the real thing. Like, so you have to make your training as realistic and as hard as possible. So everything had like a reason. Everything was, you know, done to teach you something. So yeah. like, you know, so like to keep you up there. So when you do do the real thing, you're ready for it. Like you're adverse, you're used to that adversity, you're used to that hardship you've been there before type stuff. yeah kind of thing so it instills in you the quality of like you know self-reliance and reliance on your team so you know you, you can be dealing with some pretty crazy stuff really like in, in real operations and you know you just it's not that you do it easily you do it and you don't like say well, no second there, thinking it's you not for me and yeah you, you don't like you don't doubt yourself like or you don't doubt your team yeah. because you know you, you just mm. train so much and you and with experience when you do real operations you just you know you get confident you get self-belief You're like you know you don't yeah. I, I don't ever remember saying this isn't for me i'm not saying i didn't get stuff wrong and i didn't fa- i didn't fail doing stuff of course i did but like yeah. there was never a time where i was going right no this isn't for you no never never fucking hell that's, <laughs> that's, that's fucking it. it's crazy to think about that mentality of it though yeah, it is it's all it's all everything is mental, you know. You, you know that yeah. yourself, lads. Like, and even if you watch the show yeah. there, it's not about how, how fit you are or how tough you are. Yeah. It's your mental mm. your mental strength. And that that's kind of what they train in special force that you know, your ability to persevere, your ability yeah. to keep going, your ability to be to like make something work, even if it's absolute chaos, you can still mm. make things work and you can be effective doing your job. And that's what the mindset is. So you do that in training continually. You do a couple of real operations like that. Like you become very competent and effective yeah. in what you do. Like Absolutely. Yeah. And I see in that kind of myself watching the show, whereas it's not all physical, like where obviously in some of the trials where you're being tested in cold water, like mm. you don't have to be physically fit to, to, stand, to sit in the cold water. You have to be able to, just block out your mental battle kind of thing like myself yeah. and myself and tony we, we like we'd go to like a cyrus a cyrus spa and it'd be a okay. minus three and we couldn't last 10 minutes listen, <laughs> but it's, more, uh, yeah. it's more of a mental battle than anything else yeah. like it is um, it is, isn't it like, you, like you, you're right yeah, ab- absolutely yeah absolutely like um that's exactly what it is and like whatever you're doing like like if you have the right mindset about doing stuff you know and going forward like you know th- there's nothing can stop you. And that's the bottom line. Like if, if you're kind of doubting yourself and you're going, oh geez, I don't know about this. And like the yeah. earth's going to fall over fairly quick. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Was there, um, yeah. was there any big missions you were on where 
like shit, shit is hitting the fan or something's gone down or yeah, any scary yeah, moments yeah. that stick with you in particular where you don't know whether you're even going to make a home or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, look, uh, yeah, a couple of operations. Like we did some stuff in the East Timor that I mentioned in the book um, years ago. So it was like, it was all jungle operations. We were countering these insurgents that would come in from the border into in the place where we worked and did like attack these villages and like it's like st- stuff back a hundred years ago, like, you know? Yeah. So we, we'd come in and we'd, um, like, these guys would come in, they'd, like, they'd kill people, blah, blah, blah. But, like, our, our job was to get in there in the jungle and these small little villages on the side of mountains that you can't fly into. It was monsoon season, so, mm. like, nothing flies. Jesus, yeah. And our job would be to go in and stop these fellas doing that. Like, so that, that was pretty intense. It was hard work because, you know, you're, 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 you're kind of stomping around the jungle there with all your kid on, and it's mm. hard going, like, you know what I mean? So that, there's that, some that weight in like yeah. some weight in the whole kit altogether, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, the soil you know, is wet as well. You're just gonna sink. Yeah, everything's it, wet, it? yeah, and it's it's a real test of kind of character. Um, but like the beauty of it, what I loved about it, like as you go off in an operation, just just six lads, you might get dropped in somewhere to do whatever you're doing, and that's it. Like there's just six of you on your own. Like you can't pick up the phone and call the guards if something goes wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. just the six of you there, and whatever happens, like one of the six of you needs to fix it, and that that's basically it. Yeah, so it's good, like absolutely. Well, um, just another question when I go on to so obviously, you've done your 26 years in the special forces, just to elaborate because I've seen obviously that you, you've had a lot of jobs since then. So, yeah. what made you make the decision to jump from the special forces and go on to other, on to other in a, a different career path? Yeah, th- there's a couple of things maybe in mind up, I suppose. Um, like I, I kind of had a plenty done at that stage, and I'm not saying I knew it all, but like. You know, I was looking at new challenges and so on. Like, you know, that that was kind of part of it. A mm. big part of it as well, look, was unfortunately after all the downturn in 2008 and stuff, like the pay in, in, in the army was like, like the amount of pay cuts and allowance that we got cut and all. Like, mm. the money was, was shite, like, to be honest. And like, you know, yeah. for the work we were doing and what it was in water. We were taking, I was going, like, yeah, and, and my missus was getting a pain in her face as well. You know what I mean? Like, I'm away more noon and night. And we're not being rewarded financially. So, like, you know, you're you're going home with that and you're not bringing home the readies. Your missus is giving you the cop on look. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, get a good pair now, bud. Like, that's enough you paying soldiers now. Go out there and make a few pounds. So I decided to step into the the, the private world of of security, which is, it can be lucrative depending on what you're doing. Yeah, of course. You're getting a lot more money than you would be in the army. Like, Yeah, that's so even seeing that because we have, like, we have a couple of friends that are in the army. Yeah. And as I said, they do the 24 hour duty, the shift work. And, and some, it's not even worth the money, as they say, in a way. Like, yeah, but like, that's the way it is now. You know, it's like, look, to be fair, I, like, I don't want to be getting all money and all. Like, look, I knew what I was doing and I, di- I didn't join the army to be a millionaire. Do you know what I mean? Mm. To be fair, like, that, yeah. that, I get mm. that. Like, but uh, you need to make some few pounds out of it, like, to make it worthwhile, you know, and, and kind of cover your own bills. So, look, at the oh, end of the day, I was happy to leave um, when I did as well, because, like, as I said in the first part of the question, the challenge of doing something new was kind of good. And I'm always kind of the advocate of like, you know, people talk about all oh, your comfort zone, this, your comfort zone, that. I'm not really into that either, to be honest. But like, I like doing stuff that kind of tests me, like, or keeps me thinking in a, in a new direction. You know what I mean? Because like, if you're doing the same thing all the time, right? Like, and you're comfortable, like, you're, yeah. it's grand, but like, you're not learning anymore then. You're not, you know, sorry, just leave me cat out there. The cat has gone off. Um, <laughs> that is enough. So you born a shadow me there, right? Um, that, that was a big part of it too for me. Like, and this op- opportunity came up for me. It was actually I went to Mastercard as a consultant uh, protection officer during the Rugby World Cup in 2015. So basically, like I, I left yeah. Ranger Wing in, on a Wednesday, and on the Friday I was flying to Paris to look after some famous rugby player in, in Paris doing stuff for Mastercard. So like so. I was stepping into this kind of, you know, world of like, like mass car with loads of money. Like obviously, you know what I mean? Like all these fancy yeah, hotels course. and brilliant cars like you see in the films and all. And that's kind of yeah. what I was involved in then looking after their CEO, CEO and all their high role and like kind of um, executives. So it was, it was brilliant. Like it was absolutely outstanding year. Was, it, was that tough on the mind going from when you were going out on missions to... Wait, I'm settling down a little bit here with the mask. I'm following. No, a it's, it's not tough in the mind. Yeah. 
it wasn't tough on the pocket either or you know or the, the comfort of it was pretty good so like it was very good as well because I was very lucky there was a guy involved in it and um, he was an ex-army guy he was their kind of um, head of security for Europe we'd say and like he, he understood kind of the background that I came from and like sometimes it can be a bit full on in special force and all that and like you're 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 trained to be aggressive and decisive all the time and you know what I mean? Being the alpha man, making the hard decisions, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't always work when you're working with a load of, you know, high-end, like, civilians who are, like, working for, you know, MasterCard and, like, the, yeah. they're all these gurus in, in finance or digital or whatever they do, right? So I kind of learned in that year about kind of dealing with people and, you know, toning it down a little bit, yeah. like, being in the background, you know what I mean? Saying nothing, yeah. things all nicely done. It's like, you know, it's like the duck swimming. It looks beautiful yeah. on the top and all the mayhem going on yeah. underneath no one sees. So <laughs> yeah. that, that's kind of what I learned about that, like and and uh, and how kind of civilian kind of security operations work when you're dealing with these huge like corporate entities like that of like serious cash and, and yeah. serious like inputs to stuff like you know, they were like we were doing like Champions League, you know, like the Brit Awards, you know what I mean? All these kind of like huge events, you know what I mean? Yeah, on the shoulders of all these people, like on. So it's it, it was very yeah. interesting like, because Master. Uh, Say again. Yeah, because like Mastercard obviously would sponsor. I think the Champions League, so that's probably yeah. how you got involved in them in events in a way. Yeah, yeah no, I, you, I was I was sick of watching Ronaldo play, but not this guy. If you're into it, like and look at the end of the day too. Like I enjoy sport, of course, and like if you're doing a bodyguard job with the head of um, Mastercard, he has to go to a game. You have to go to the game too and you have to sit behind them to mind them but it's handy you can look at the match as well while you're looking at him so it's great you get you get the best absolutely of yeah yeah, so yeah traveling the world you were you were doing it all really weren't you you were seeing what you wanted to see and you were traveling yeah, it was good and look it's, it's a very kind of seductive kind of world as well because like i came from like don't get wrong special forces was brilliant in, in the army and all but like this world i was going jeez this is dead like you've all these like you just stay in the best of place. It's mad, like just all these beautiful hotels all over the world, and and like the threat on it was was negligible at times. Like there was times, all right, in the, in the Middle East and stuff where I worked with them, where it was a bit more kind of ropey, like and you know, yeah. Um, I remember doing a gig in Istanbul one time. There was a few bombs went off and all, but like that was about it. Other than that, like your biggest kind of risk is spilling your coffee and burning yourself, or <laughs> not too much. like. Eating too much scones in the buff in the breakfast buffet or something, you know that was it. Like that was <laughs> yeah. the danger. That's you're well looked. You're you're well looked after, and that's like, oh, like geez, you went yeah. back to saying saying it was it's all like looking for new challenges. Like, and my opinion is, if you don't go look for new challenges, you won't grow. No, um, absolutely, yeah. I'd be I'd be the same as that now, and like it's all no matter what that is for you. Like, and I, I found in my career, like since I left the army. Like, I've done so many different things as well. Like, yeah, mainly in the security vein, I guess. But, like, all this stuff now with the book and the show, like, mm. you know, it's, it's, I'm, I'm stepping forward every time, like, learning new things and taking that challenge of sticking your neck on the block for something that may or may not work. And, like, the kind of, the enjoyment of that is good. Like, not, not when it goes well, of just trying that out and that excitement of it. I enjoy that as well. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah taking the gamble and, yeah, yeah like that's it like seeing how it goes because like the arse could fall over in a heartbeat but like if it does i'll just do something else because like that's yeah, what you won't know yeah. until you try it. exactly that's what the army trained me to be like it's resilient and just if something doesn't work i'll do something else and if that doesn't work i'll do something else and that's that's the way you have to be in life that's it it's risk, it's risk and reward at the end of the day yeah, like if you don't like, try it you won't uh look that's it yeah, but people, what they say is, if you don't buy a ticket, you won't enter the raffles. So you you oh, kind of you done that on a good few yeah. on a good few occasions. So after Mastercard, you went on, and I believe you done some work in Afghanistan. I believe I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was so, that was good. Um, there was an old friend of mine gave me a shout there. Um, I used to work with him in the Ranger Wing. He was a commander of mine and a uh, good fella. Like, so I said, okay. So we had up a few options about. I had a chat with the family about the plausibility of me going to Afghanistan and like I suppose too like look like don't get me wrong mass care and all that kind of stuff was brilliant and all that technical or that kind of that world but like as I mentioned earlier like the, the risk in it was minimal enough which is fine I suppose it was a part of me enjoys that adventure to, thing as well like and yeah. like you know the like yeah the, the money on the table for going to Afghanistan obviously has to be good like to, to get your ass in the plane over there in the first place 
Yeah. It can be mayhem there, but uh, I kind of said, yeah, I'll have a look at it. So I'm down for a month to have a look. And I, I enjoyed it. Like, um, So that led me to doing the best part of three years working between there and Pakistan. Um, doing, um, I was an operations manager for a global um, technical or telecommunications company. So my, my job like, was running myself and, and another guy would be a, a, two, a pair um, in for two months at a time and we'd run the operations of all our guys on the ground all over Afghanistan. So everything from like a lad on the side of a mountain in Kandahar looking after a telecommunications mast to like um, looking after the CEO when he comes in, you know, having protection teams on the ground, searchers, like, and then doing intelligence reports for going to places like, you know, if there's a threat on this road, there's bombs on that road, there's, there's going to be a shootout here, this is going to happen there, there's an attack coming there, you know, so that's kind of what you did on a daily basis. So it was very challenging because obviously, look, so much, like you've seen Afghanistan there in the last few months there, what's going on there, the Taliban are back kind of in, in the mix of yeah. taking over. Yeah. But but they were very, we, we probably wouldn't have been as, as aware in that time frame when I was there because like there'd be huge things happening there that wouldn't grab the headlines on this side of the world, so you wouldn't see it. So people would sell their mind, ah, there's nothing going on there. But every day, like, there's like there was people getting killed every day, you know, there's car bombs every day, there's like people getting shot and blah blah blah. Yes, yeah. that, that's kind of where you're living. So you're like it, Afghanistan isn't like here and the people you're protecting. So my job was to make sure everyone got to work alive and got home alive if they were Afghan, if they were foreign nationals that lived in a kind of fortified compound. Same thing, I, I was living with them, we'd get them from A to B, like. Ray, I want to go into this meeting with this company, Grand. I get a protection team together, or I, I'd look after them, or I do it myself. We bring them to the meeting to do what they have to do, bring them back, that kind of stuff. So, like, there's a, a bit of logistics involved, a bit of intelligence involved, a bit of like kind of protection involved, yeah. a bit of everything, and uh, loads of magic. And you need to be clairvoyant as well. Mm. To, to Did anything ever go wrong? Yeah, all the time, man. I was, we got zapped loads of times. Like, I, I was in a couple, a number of fairly big, um, vehicle bombs like two two truck bombs i was involved in one the aftermath one i basically got it in the face like we i got we got blown up um one one january in 2019 like so and this the you don't hear about at all over here you don't well, hear like, it, anything it was, of it no you probably did, like it was on the news at the time because it was uh there was the, the first one definitely was because um it was the biggest kind of truck bomb ever in afghan history so um, <laughs> seven tons like so uh, to put it in perspective it's like a cement mixer like truck, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Full of explosives, like so. You you think of that, like you think of like you, you know, like a spark or a bomb, or you see on the telly like a grenade, which is a small little thing, the size of an mm. orange going off, to bang off that and the damage it does, like it, it'll kill yeah. people within ten meters. You think of the, something the size of a cement mixer going off, like you know, it, it's it's knocking walls like two kilometers yeah. away. It's, well, it's mental, mental, like. Mental. How close were you to it? That one, I was I was en route to. Uh, to work um, so I was I was actually delayed strangely enough which would have kind of meant I would have been in the target area but, but luckily yeah. I wasn't uh, so I was just directly on the aftermath of you know getting sorted out after it but the other one um, I was about I was within about 75 metres of it when it went off it was a, it was a one ton one equally a nice bang like you don't want to be hearing that on a, on a Monday night at 7 o'clock when yeah, you just get, you to to get your dinner in the, in the <laughs> restaurant just standing outside my room ready to rock and then bang look in the cup and then you're looking at the re that reaction of and like what they do is they the the, the taliban and isis they drive a big truck or something with huge explosive on it up to a wall of a compound where international people were they'd blow mm -hmm. that and then what comes next then it'd be a load of guys to assault it so they'd come in through the the wall that they'd blown in carrying suicide yeah. vests and weapons they'd fight their way into wherever they can go killing as many people as they can because that's what they do regardless of who you are, whether you're like, you know, whether you're Muslim, Christian, like man, woman, boy, child, don't matter. They'll, they'll, kill, they'll kill everyone. And that's kind of what happened. So for me as a security officer on the ground there with a team, like we 25 guys protecting that place. As soon as that bang goes off, everyone is running to areas to be protected and hide. And me and the rest of the team, we're running to the bang to make sure, because we know these boys Catch are coming, them coming in. in. They're yeah. coming in. Like, so if they get in, Everyone's getting it, like so. You, you have to stop them boys getting in. That's how it works. That's basically how it works. And how long did you spend there? Um, I spent close to three years there. 
then yeah so like it was good like it's a beautiful country like you know it gets mm. people are amazing they're incredibly resilient people so my my daily job would like i was in kabul up nearly all the time um would involve working with afghan lads and my team like all the time mm. and like they're so like like honor means so much to those people and like family and you know like uh, looking after you like they have a lovely kind of um kind of a welcome system and a kind of a like hospitality thing that's a mark of honor for them like that they look after you like they're amazing yeah. people they're, they're, they're good crack as well like you know I mean? and that's and that's what i mean and like even like they like they they are they're very nice people as well considering what's going on even in the world at the moment in afghanistan yeah they, they, they put up with a lot given the no, geez, look, we, we, we don't realize like people be thinking that you know we're getting a bit of hardship here in ireland you know like if there is people are poor and i know there's poverty there and people have issues and homeless issues and yeah mm. blah 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 but like you have all that going on and you've an insurgency war and a terrorist organization incredibly active at the same time it kind of ups the ante big times you know what i mean absolutely yeah. and it and it see life in a bigger perspective like you, you hear people in ireland giving out about Nightclubs not being reopened or not being extended. Yeah. But in the bigger world, how handy we have it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the bigger world, like day. these boys are targeting, would, would deliberately target schoolgirls going to school like, and kill yeah. them, like, blow them up. Like, that's like, how do you, where do you even put that in your head? It's, it's mental. Like, from our, yeah, from, from our world, what we think of and what we see as normal, you know, it's, 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 it's mad. Like. That's yeah, it is. It's, a, it's crazy. The whole different world altogether. Yeah. 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 Like, it is. Yeah, and you see kind of like, you know, Obviously, the poverty is huge there as well, like the children. And, and strange enough that people don't see, there's a drugs issue as well in the likes of Afghanistan from, like, you know, opium from poppy seeds, you know, opium mm. poppies. And, like, there's a huge problem with addicts on top of all this. You know what I mean? It's not just, yeah. you know, the Taliban stuff and all that. There's the normal, like, large city problems of crime and banditry and being robbed and being mugged and murdered and the same. And then you have all the terrorism stuff and care bombs and, like, you know, it's like Grand Theft Auto there to be, <laughs> and that's what I mean. Quite, even they like, put our arm off to live here, yeah, yeah. Like, and yeah, like, and you can see, like, I still have friends on the ground there who didn't get out, like, you know, Afghan lads that I work with, I, you know, that I, I'm in contact with. And like, if you think of it from their point of view, like, you know, they were promised the, the world, the moon, the stars by America and everybody else, and yeah, we'll educate you and live our way, and blah blah blah. So they took that step. And then they basically got shafted. The Americans said, right, okay, we've enough of this. We're out now. You can deal with it yeah. yourselves. So, like, you know, going to school for them, like, trying to live the life that they were promised, it's all gone now. So they're all trying to backpedal to get back into, to fix that any way they can. And, like, these lads that I know, we were educated guys, like, you know, qualified as, like, lawyers and, you know, professionals, like, that would get jobs anywhere in the world. And they're living in this regime now where, like the Taliban will target people who are smart because they know smart people don't necessarily do what you tell them to do. They'll think about it. Why do I have to do this? So the Taliban will take out all those people first, all the legal system people, all the people in government, you know, at, even at the lower levels. It's like the county council or corporation. That's what they yeah. do. They take all, just watch the space. That's what they'll do. They'll pull all them out because they want people to be uneducated and simple. They can manage them then better. That's what they want though. They're very smart, aren't they? They are smart, like you know, they're they're they, they evolve, like you know what I mean. They evolve as yeah. an organization, and like they have some, like yeah, they have some um, incredible people like that do incredibly tough things. You know what I mean? To, to, yeah, to other people, it's yeah. scary to even think about it. Oh, it's <laughs> mad! Like it's so, it is. It's it's incredibly complicated. Like and look, the whole idea of Afghanistan and all the different cultures and religions and like I was there for, as I say, close to three years. There's a lot mm -hmm. going on there, like and. You hear, I, I do be laugh when you hear people, I'm, I'm now handing you over just, just expert on Afghanistan on the radio and blah, 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 or the telly. There's no such thing as an expert in Afghanistan. Yeah. Because it's yeah. so complicated and so much going on. Now, you, you get lads who might have a good idea of it, of course, of what's going on. But like, it, it's the situation is what the Americans would say, fluid. Everything changes quickly over there. Do you know what I mean? So it's hard to keep a grip on stuff. But anyway. Jeez, that was a big rant there with Afghanistan, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> We're all there. Shout out to the boys in Afghanistan. You know yeah, I mean? do, yeah. Shout out to the boys, yeah. <laughs> no, the, yeah. The the <laughs> but yeah, just kind of moving on, obviously, like just kind of going on to the Hell Week. You now, obviously, what, like, obviously, yeah, the show was on RTE. I'm sure many of the viewers here have obviously heard of it. Um, what made you, how did you get into RTE in the aspect? And 
like your role yeah. as such? Did you propose the idea or did RTE come to you? Yeah, so good, good question there, um, Glenn. Yeah, so I was asked by a former colleague of mine who was involved in the first series of it, um, would I be interested in doing it? Like, it wasn't my idea. I was, I got a phone call from him. They were, look, this production company called Motive are after coming to me. They're interested in, in making this uh, TV program. How you fixed? I told him, no, I won't tell you what I said. I can't say it on air, I guess. <laughs> I told him what to do. Well, the second word was off, is all I can say to you. Mm. So I said, no, I didn't want to do that. Like, because being in that kind of world all my career, all that security stuff, mm. you, you want to keep stuff under the radar. And that's kind of what I did all my career. So, like, I was kind of thinking, no, do I want to be on the telly doing this? I don't. I don't really. So, between the jigs and the reels, anyway, the other lads involved, the other lads on the show, um, who were good friends of mine. Um, they got approached as well, and you know we were phoning each other. Here, were you talking to that fellow about this? Yeah, what, what do you think? I don't know. I think it's a load of shite. Yourself, no. What, what do you think? And like between the jigs and reason, we said, look, we'll try it. And we said, let's do the kind of a, um, uh, a kind of a pilot one where we got this group of people and made a short thirty minute thing, so this company could have a look at it, and it worked. Like so, that was grand. And what's funny, I was still in Afghanistan at the time, so. I, I did it on my my leave time home. Then I went back to Afghanistan and then came back and did the show, uh, the first yeah. show. And then I stayed at home. Then I didn't go back to Afghanistan because I said, all right, this is going all right. I'll do this instead. Do you know, yeah. I prefer people, yeah. people pointing cameras on, at me, them guns. So I said, right, I'm going yeah. with this one. So, yeah, so it went well, lads. Um, it, it, the first one, the first series, it went well. People were into it. You know, mm. like, there was a lot of people giving out at the time about all the cursing and all oh, you've all these bullies on the telly giving out to these people and make yeah. them do mad stuff but like it, it, the, the, the smart people would see the process of what we're trying to do with these people mm. like people go oh yeah. you, you break them down to the zero and you do this you don't break them down what you're doing is you're trying to get the best out of those people and they don't even know what that means you know they yeah. think they're doing their best but there's another 20% in the tank like that they don't know about because they've never been in there like they never open yeah. that reserve for themselves so that's what you that's what we do in it like so and the, the most recent series of it like was very kind of popular because you know we'd all these kind of professionals on it and athletes yeah and stuff. So it was good like, it was good do you, do you think people who went through that like who've done the SAS and went through them grueling months of it get offended that RTE do try to squeeze it in to just seven days no they, they don't because like I, I'm not sure about the UK boys how it works but I know in Ireland because like you know my former unit the lads I worked with like we, we kind of got the, the the nod from them as well about doing this and like we st- we have a small community and we're all still linked in you know yeah. and we're all and like you don't you don't mess up like and you don't kind of go outside a circle if you know what I mean so we, we kind of got the nod from the the Ranger wing and and the ex Ranger wing community to to do the show and like they're very pro it like because at the end of the day like I suppose Tony to put it in perspective nobody knew about the ranger wing or what they did and stuff like that and like the government don't even really care about the ranger wing or what they do like you know and people didn't see them so th- this kind of shows people what gives them an, enough and a small idea of what people do to get into the ranger wing in the first yeah. place never mind the operation so i think guys who even still serving were like were, were enjoying that factor of it like because they can't do it themselves they can't go on the telly they're all anonymous, you know what I mean? They all have to go off and do do it, not do what they're told, but they have these jobs that, that they swore to do. So that's what they'll do. But um yeah, but they can like people can see us still doing it, so it's good. Like so th- there's no like to answer your question, I suppose, in a long way, they they, they don't mind because it, it gets kind of that life out to people and people see geez. The recognition of what you're Yeah, that's a tool. Yeah. It, it is, it's a bit of recognition because look from, from in my own case, like the, the 17 years I served there, like, you know, my, my neighbors didn't even know what I did. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, my yeah. family knew and my close friends, but anybody, if anybody else, as far as they're concerned, I was a physical training instructor, which wasn't a lie because I was like, so that's what I yeah. used to tell people. So you go off and you do your operations and your deployments, and whatever you're doing, and you come back here and slope back in and go to Tesco's with your missus shot or whatever's going on your normal life. <laughs> and you just tip around like everybody else when you're off, you know? And what yeah. you do, whatever you do when you're tra- when you're on missions and in operations, it's just kept to yourself. And that's the way it goes. I think a lot of people who are, um, who even the Americans army when they see it on YouTube, they do reviews of of the Irish one compared to the English one. They do, they, re- they really think the Irish one's most realistic and tougher yeah. compared to. Yeah, um, it's it's different, I suppose. Or, or 
Yeah, or like in fairness to the boys and you, I don't watch them. I don't watch these shows, strangely enough, right? Obviously, mm-hmm. I see her one because I'm interested in it and look, I'm, I'd be asked questions about the show, so I need to watch it. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I think our one and, and something that we, it's close to our hearts, like was that honesty of it and that like kind of making it as real as we could. Like there's no drama, like there's no cut, there's no, it's just all as you see it, like it's all real. It's all kind of like, proper as we'd say like but and i think people like that like irish people like that irish people can Respect see it through, more isn't it they do yeah, yeah you know it's like absolutely. irish people can see through bullshit in a heartbeat and they're going i watch that yeah. that's not a show should they? they're all going off yeah. to tea there when the camera stops rolling or they're going back <laughs> to the sauna or just the, the spa weekend or whatever like yeah. so I, that's what irish people love like irish people seen love seeing other irish people doing real stuff right yeah. and i suppose the, the boys in the uk one and, and the american ones like you know they're at a lot longer and like Fair play to them. They've done well. It's a great kind of franchise and it's a global success to them and fair play. Like, but uh, it's a it's a different process for them, like, you know what I mean? You know, the way they're doing it. Yeah. It's it's it is it's very different. And like you said, um just kind of go, going back like of it being of it being real, realistic, but remember, like you were saying, people people probably think God oh, are going doing something. Like we know a guest, obviously we don't want to name them kind of thing that was actually on our show. And he explained it's definitely not the case. Um, kind it's of the case. real deal. It's the real deal, as as he yeah. said, he told like, us. That the- it has to be like, and we'd be rootless, like, because, you know, like, we have a plan, obviously, for the week or whatever they're doing, right? Where every day is broken down into, we're going to do this and this, this, then this, then this, then this, right? But like any plan, it doesn't always work. Like, things might change, the weather might change, what you're doing. Sea conditions would mean you can't do a particular event. No, you might have to do something later. So you have to be yeah. flexible, like like any kind of job, you know. But like we're we're rootless then as well. What we want from it, like what pe- mm-hmm. people's input and how they act. So we put the students in the mindset and the zone of being that student and that number for the whole time. That there's no outside influence. Like the crew doesn't talk to them. Like you know, there's loads of cameramen and sound technicians and people everywhere. They stay. They yeah. don't go near them. Like we're rootless about that because you have to because. If, if you have them interacting with all these other people, they don't buy into it then as well. You know what I mean? They don't become yeah. that number. Whereas if you, yeah. if you just keep them on their own little bubble, just dealing with us, they, like after about 48 hours, they're, they're number 10 or number 12 or whatever they are. That's who they become. It's, it's mad. Like, it's mad that's, all that, that's all that they're saying, as, as obviously as I was saying on, on the show, and yeah. kind of just kind of going back to what you were saying, like um, it is the resilience, like you, like like you were saying smart people would understand that they're, they're trying to make the better out of people from what i've seen of it mm. absolutely you do because yeah, it, it, and you hit, you hit the nail on the head there glenn it's all about resilience like like life mm. is about resilience resilience mm. is probably one of the most important things you have like and you know it's yeah. banned the word is banded around now obviously because of covid and there's talks online about resilience and like resilience is very simple like it, it just means you just keep going that's all resilience is you know like you, you yeah. deal with your mistakes, your problems, you fix what you can, you move on. You know what I mean? That's it. You keep going forward. Like that, that's the whole idea of it. And if you and can break if you break it down that simply, you're laughing. Exactly. And that's kind of obviously like for me personally, as if you are watching the show, I seeing that it's not just is I just drowning people for the crack, is I doing it for a purpose to get people to make people go the extra mile. Yeah, like, you are. That's, that's, like, that's me as a viewer. Seeing no, that. And look, well spotted. Like, you've described the programme better than I can there. And that's exactly it. Like, people think, yeah. like, ah, you're trying to kill these fellas. Or as I mentioned, or, or you're breaking them down. Like, we're not, again, to repeat myself. Like, mm-hmm. you're, you're, you're putting them in a place where they, they, you want them to make it. Like, you want them to complete the, ch- the challenge or the event. But, like, but they have to do it. You know what I mean? So you, you set it up for them to do it. And you, you, you let them at it then and you see what happens, you know? And that's the yeah, beauty yeah. of the show because we don't even know what's going to happen with people. Like, you know, there's yeah. no, like, it's not so organized that we know he's going to do this. You put it, you put a, a fella or a girl up to this challenge. You know what's going to happen, you know? And mm. that's what I love about it. Like they could all pack up the first night or they could all finish it. It's, you know, it, it's, that's yeah. what I love about the whole thing. Like you just it's don't know. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's exciting. And you don't have, you have control to a certain extent, but you don't have full control. Like, no yeah. one has full control of anything. They never do. So you actually say it a few times, Jordan, the show says, you, you do say, oh, we want you to, we do, like, you want them to get through it all. Yeah, you, you, it's you down do. down to yeah. them pushing themselves. You say it between yourselves when the camera goes on, these after you, may yeah. interview someone with the balaclava and all. 
that intense stuff. But at yeah. the end, they just do just want them to push that extra mile and actually dig deep where what they, they just do know they have it in them. Yeah, you do. And like the individual to get it out of them. Absolutely, Tony. And that's that's like to get these reserves of like um, you know, self belief and power or whatever whatever words you want to do in them, like because because you know if their their sleep is reduced, like their their food is reduced, they're physically exhausted, like and they're they're they're, they're probably scarpy and cranky the whole time, if, to be honest, <laughs> right? And and you're making them do all these extra stuff and like it goes back to our training like we always did that in our training that like you, you we're just so used to having adversity with you all the time if it's not real adversity we create it in training so like that means that you know when you're making decisions when you're doing stuff it's constantly pressurizing it's constantly hardship so when it comes to the real deal then you're 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 toughened and ready for it. like you know what i mean you're yeah. inoculated to real missions and real adversity then because you've dealt with it in training or in reality yeah. And like you understand your experience, okay. I did this before and this worked out for me, so I can do this again, or I can, you know, I can learn. It won't be anything on. new to you. Well, it, yeah, it'll be, it'll, it, you're right. Like it, it, it won't be, it probably still be new, but at least you'll have the bend taken out of it a little bit. Like yeah. thing is out of it. Yeah. And that's what it does for you. And it just, it just allows you then to kind of, like your ability to deal with kind of, you know, what people would fall apart with. Oh, Jesus, I can't deal with that. You can, like, because it teaches you to just slow everything down calm everything down, relax the body, like do whatever composure and techniques you're doing to get yourself ready. Force yourself, you deal with yourself, then you start dealing with what's going on around you. Because if you jump straight into something without having yourself sorted out or being prepared, like it's not going to work out for you. So we, we very much like, it doesn't like special forces training, it doesn't make you a robot, but it just mm -hmm. makes you understand that, you know, there's ways to deal with and to be composed to deal with adversity that you can do. Yeah. Absolutely. I think while we're talking about this, you should mention the tour that you have been planned now with Rory. Oh yeah, deadly. The, the yeah. Rory O'Connor. Yeah, me sitting Rory. I, I was only chatting to him there yesterday. We just sit down about what we're going to do. So like, yeah, it's 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 interesting, and it's what I'm saying there earlier about this whole like trying out things. Like like I'm going to be standing up on the stage on Vicar Street with this lad talking about like um, <laughs> yeah. resilience mindset. You know, like coping techniques, self belief, all the things I'm talking about. And also, there'll be a bit of humor and a bit of crack in it as well, because it will already be there. And look, I'll be throwing Sorry, it on yeah, there. Yeah. Well. But um, we're, we're, yeah, it's it's very in exciting because like we're you know that we're, we're kind of I think we're sold out there in Vicar Street. We're we're on the twenty first of next month. We're there. Month. We're November. There. Is, yeah, yeah we're we have Galway and Limerick as well. Yeah, we're Galway Limerick on the twenty second, uh, which is the Monday night. We're down in Limerick then on the Saturday the twenty seventh. So. I'm looking forward to it, like, because it's a new thing for me, you know. Yeah. I, I faced the Taliban. I haven't faced an audience with a few pints in them on the Saturday night yet. <laughs> <laughs> they could be worse. That could, yeah, especially, could be worse. especially the Irish. <laughs> there you go, lads. Yeah, I, 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 oh, Jesus, it's not, these boys are nothing to the Taliban or whatever. And then even with Rory as well, no better man to do it with because... Yeah. Obviously, listen to Rory's story, pardon the pun. Um, listen to Rory's story. He's been through, obviously, adversity and his own yeah. mental health battles, which is actually very good to listen to as well. So, uh, no, it is. And, like, he's a brilliant advocate of it because, like, you know, physically he's a big man. Like, And, you know, people yeah. think, like, you know, big men and boys don't cry and all this kind of stuff. Like, And it just shows people. I think what the beauty of him, like, he wears his heart in his sleeve and he's a very honest and genuine guy. And, yeah. uh He's his message is like it's okay if you're struggling with stuff and there's things you can do like you know what I mean you don't have to be this hair tough man all the time like yeah. and I'm on then to be the hair tough man next and that's what I'm on for <laughs> a lot of people can relate to him as well <laughs> yeah look everyone does he, he's brilliant like he just he just disarms people because he's just such a genuine person like he's he's you know he's an amazing guy like you know and I'm delighted to be working with him doing this you know delighted. Mm. And so I just um I want to ask you just quickly about your book, Ranger, yeah. Ranger Twenty Two. Obviously, I've seen that I was that I was out recently. I just kind of want to ask you, like, how long does it take it to like obviously to write the book, or obviously you got something to write it, and how long does the whole process take? Because yeah. obviously I haven't read it yet. My plan is to read it next, but yeah, tell us a bit how what what made you got into writing a book and the whole process with it, how long it took, etc., and what it's about just for the viewers. Okay, good one. Uh, good question, Ben. So, like, again, it wasn't my idea. Uh, Jesus, it sounds like I came up with nothing, all this stuff. Um, I think after series two of the show, um, the published company I work with called Gill gave me a shout and he says, look, with these ideas, would you be interested in writing a kind of a, 
life lessons book or memoirs of your life and what you've done and things you've learned. So I said, okay, I thought about it. And, and like the show, I wasn't sure first what I had to offer. Now, and when I kind of had to think about it, I said, geez, I have a few things here to put in. Like, so um, that's, that's how I got to do it. Uh, it was a better, more smarter people had the idea and I just followed it through. Uh, the writing of it then, um, it's funny because I, I was at a thing there last week um, in the GPO because I got not, I got shortlisted for a book award for the book like because the book is a bestseller now and, like it's yeah, uh, congratulations it's, mad, like, it's so it's great people are enjoying the book like it's 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 flying out there and uh, I, they were doing the book award kind of announcement so I was meeting all these other writers and like real writers now not like me yeah. <laughs> that I saw like you know what I mean and I didn't know but these people like are. Like these smart people that you know write all these fiction books from their mind like they make all this stuff up amazing like geez these people are so smart yeah. and uh, I was chatting to one of them like one one lady and she, she has this really successful book that she wrote and she was telling me it took her two and a half years to write the book right I was going Jesus and she said to me how long did you take to write the book to answer your question nine yeah. weeks I wrote it in nine weeks nine weeks <laughs> nine oh weeks, yeah. wow yeah so like my, my, my phase of it like so I wrote it in nine weeks in, in lockdown last year. So I kind of started at the end of mm. November into December, took a little break Christmas and finished it by the end of January, basically. So it was nine weeks. But like, I'll be very structured when I do stuff. You know what I mean? I actually wrote mm. most of it here on this computer that I'm talking to you on. Um, looking out into me garden there and the kids are out on the trampoline when I'm right. I'm rolling out the door. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, like yeah, so yeah. I found the experience, Glenn, very... Um, I really enjoyed it more than I thought I would. I thought it'd be a chore because like, I'm not the most academic. Yeah, I've done <coughs> courses. I've done college stuff. Um, I, I'm educated, but like, I never saw myself as a writer. I probably still don't, to be honest, but uh, yeah. I enjoyed the process. And what it did for me, it just reminded me of stuff I'd forgotten about even. And like, mm. That's what I was going to say. You must have set yourself back and said, oh, shit, I actually did that. Yeah, yeah. Even talking mad, to you like, now, you're a man with a lot of knowledge and stories. Well, and, look, and, and do you know what as well? Tony, like people are interested in, and like, and I wrote the book, right? Because like, yeah, I'm an army fella, and like, like lads are into like army stuff and training and team training, yeah. like all that. I've been doing that all my life, and I was kind of going, yeah, I'll have a bit of that in it, but I like stuff in it like that. You know, a, a, a mammy with three kids can read it, like in the morning when after she drops the kids to school, or you know, a, a lad who's in college can read it on the way to college in the bus or something like that. Like, so yeah. I, I'm very much kind of was thinking about being the person reading the book when I was writing it. And I was going like, I don't want to be just one of these army stories. I'd like a bit more in it for people. Like, and you know, like the book is about le life lessons. Uh, like, yeah. It's about an army going about me and how I learned them, but it's about <laughs> life lessons you can do anywhere. Like uh, and stuff we all pick up. From Relate to everyone. Yeah, it is. Like I, I find and like, like I'm a simple guy, as I said, like I'm not bloody like some scientist. So it's written very simply and very kind of uh, accurately. I think, but um, yeah, so that yeah. was nine weeks I did it. And then kind of there was an editing phase then that went down for a couple of weeks where they're going, you know, they're going through me grammar and they're going, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> like an English <laughs> test. <laughs> yeah. So like that was interesting too because obviously just, you know, they help you to rewrite the thing. They'd say, look, this paragraph, yeah, can you, if are you, would, you, would you think about putting in this word and saying this, like, you know what I mean? Because, you know, you're writing like a five-year-old. So I was, but uh, <laughs> So that was interesting too like and obviously look there was stuff i couldn't mention obviously like uh, because like the first thing i did once i decided i was going to do it was play the visit to my old unit in special forces and like some of my colleagues back there the commander and stuff and look this is what's happening lads you know what i mean gave them a heads up yeah. Yeah. and they were happy enough you know but obviously like anything i was writing in i had to get the stamp off them or you know obviously there was some sensitive stuff or you know confidential stuff I couldn't mention or any particular operations that I yeah. might have been on that aren't in the public domain I, I couldn't be mentioning them like you know but I can allude to stuff once I'm not naming names and staying yeah. exact places and dates it's fine so that's kind of what I did like um, yeah, but it was a good experience I really enjoyed it like and like as I said earlier like I can't believe the success like it's 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 kind of unusual because I thought like maybe a couple of army lads might buy it and a few lads in the GA club maybe but you know, it's even uh, the toenails you're getting when you're doing the tour with the book in Easton's. I've seen you put up a few times, you're getting good yeah, it's good, yeah, it. like it's good, and it's I, I like doing that. And, and hopefully, like with the kind of the the kind of the change in movement you now after the 23rd, I can um 
I can go and sign people's books in the bookshop because I was going out signing stock, t- stock Tony. So I'm, I'm signing like 50 books with nobody in the shop, just me yeah. and some of the staff taking pictures. Mm-hmm. So, but like people, people yeah. are brilliant. That's another thing I need to mention too, like the support I get from people. Um, off anyone, like I'm getting these brilliant messages from people from all over the place, like fucking young fellas, young ones, old ones, old fellas, like fucking bus drivers, <laughs> guards, like nurses, everyone, yeah. housewives who send me messages on just the mm-hmm. different social medias saying, like, oh, it's deadly, or I love this part of it, or you said this, and blah blah blah. So, like, I'm delighted with that because that's what I hoped. Like, I hoped anyone could read it, so that was the kind of so well, it's good and people see, are sound like people are sound you can definitely see the crowds are really taking to it and acknowledging mm. it a lot yeah like people yeah it's great and it's great for me like people are very good like and I know people often say mm. about Irish people oh they knock you I look at this fella he thinks he's great like there's, yeah. there's none of that gone on for me like people like even yourselves yeah. they're on thanks for doing this podcast as well like cause it's all it's all good for me like you know what I mean it's, yeah. it's great people are sound like and good they, for they, us as well they help you out like it's good Absolutely, and like, but like you said, like the support you're getting is unbelievable. Like, is unbelievable. Yeah. We get a lot of guests on who would be who we wouldn't feel like we get the recognition that they deserve in kind of sports. Like we've had powerlifters on who wouldn't get the money, but we feel that you really deserve all the recognition that you deserve and any kind of success you're well and truly deserve because you've had a long career, you've done a lot of work, and you've done our stint and said it's all well deserved, even on the book. Well deserved. Sound, yeah. Thanks, thanks, lads. Just want to say thank you, that. especially for thanks. coming on because you're high demand now with everything going on, coming into the everything easing up. So thank you for giving up your I have, time on a Saturday. I, I, I have I'm one more about. question for you, though. Yeah, go for it. One more question. Yeah. Do you right next five years? Do you have any goals in particular you want to set for yourself? New challenges or anything? Yeah, I I do. Like I, I'm I'm the kind of guy like I keep saying, like I don't sit on the seat for long. I'm always off doing something else and. Like, you know, the way people's fears will stop them doing stuff. Like, yeah. I, I make a point of not letting, making that happen to me. And I use, I try and use it as a positive. So mm-hmm. for me, I have a training business as well that I only started this year as a lockdown. It's called Core Skills Training. It's a company I, I, I've developed to do training with teams, corporate individuals about like all the stuff we're talking about there. And like that, my goal now is to kind of get that established in the next couple of years and enjoy it going off doing that. So, and look, there might be more books. There might be more TV shows as well. I'll see what happens. Do you know what I mean? I'll I'll chant something. Who knows? Like, that's what I love about it. Like, I actually probably don't know what I'm I'm going to be doing next year. And I love that. I love that kind of sense of adventure. Yeah, look, let's see what happens. I'll find something to do. Absolutely. Hopefully we get to meet in person now in the future. Happy birthday, lads. Yeah. If you go, here, when when I book two out, I'll, I'll come up with it. And we can do that one then. Yeah, the next book. Absolutely, the book, Absolutely. book I think, or join the dots. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a pop up book, <laughs> a comic book next. Uh, we get a comic yeah, book yeah. about right, you now. Kind of stuff. It. Even they're flipping hard to write. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, now we just kind of want to sign off and just say thanks very much again for coming on. And we wish you every, yeah. uh, every bit of success that comes along yeah, the listen, way. That, that, lads, thanks again. I really enjoyed the chat and the crack. Yeah, we hope you did. Look at your own show. And look, I, I'll, I'll keep an eye on it now because uh, I'll, I'll watch it. I look forward to seeing your next guest in the next few weeks, months. So good luck yeah, yourselves. We'll give uh, a mention for you, the book. And we'll, we'll ah, sound lads, I appreciate it. Like the Thanks tour and everything like that. And come here, I, I know a good DIY shop if you can get that wallpaper changed if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Bastard. All right, sir. Get one in, didn't you? Get a black bag up behind it, up behind it or something. <laughs> I can't say that. The curtains match it there yeah, behind no. me. Yeah. Nobody, it's it's actually, I'm, I'm actually, actually just looking at what's behind me now at the moment just in case it's actually Glenn's sister's wallpaper so don't worry <laughs> he doesn't know that <laughs> thanks very no, much Ray. thank you Ray for everything thank you yeah so boys good to chat to you yeah. thanks very much oh, thanks, thanks. Oh, thank you good night